So what's going on with this altered circuit of ours that is receiving um, from pin 9 a voltage that is obtained with a pulse width modulation technique? That is, we're supposedly writing 2.5 volts from pin 9. But if we look, uh, it looked like that's what was being supplied with the digital multimeter. And it did not look like that was what was being supplied when we used the analog read of uh, analog input pins on the redboard itself. So we'll do something that physicists often do when they don't understand um, a signal that's coming through. We will uh, look at the signal from pin 9 on the redboard using a very important device to physicists um, and electrical engineers, and that device is called a oscilloscope. So this is an oscilloscope, and what we're looking at on this oscilloscope is a pretty much a graph of the voltage that is being put out as a function of time on pin 9 of the redboard. So what you see is that first pin 9 is at 0 volts, then it goes up to 5 volts, then it goes down to 0 volts, then it goes up to 5 volts, back and forth. And the, the distance, the, the distance on the horizontal axis that you go is a distance in time. So this is time on the horizontal axis and voltage on the vertical axis. And you see it's flipping back and forth between 5 volts and 0 volts, 5 volts, 0 volts, 5 volts, 0 volts. And so the idea is that if you're at 5 volts for half the time and 0 volts for the other half of the time, the average is two and a half volts, right? You're at two and a half volts on average. And so the digital multimeter, which can't, uh, which isn't set up to read very quickly, it looks at the voltage over a long period of time. It sort of picks up the average voltage two and a half volts. On the other hand, these analog reads that are being performed, um, the analog reads that are being performed, uh, the analog reads that are being performed by pins A0, A1, and A2, those reads must be happening quite quickly, and they must be picking up the output, the, the state of the circuit, when the output is at zero. And that's why most of the time uh, those analog reads are picking up zero volts on everything, because the pin is essentially turned off whenever those quick analog reads are performed by the breadboard. And so that explains why the digital multimeter seems to get the, quote, right answer, while the analog reads seem to get the wrong answer. Now, I like using the analog reads, so I'm going to figure out a little trick so that the output of the pin, um, which is flopping between 5 volts and 0 volts uh, for different fractions of a time at 5 and different fractions of a time at 0, uh, I'm going to figure out how to how to kind of average that out on the output, so that when we when we provide voltage to our circuit, it's really coming uh, to the circuit uh, at the at the um, average voltage or the voltage we want for all time. So instead of a plot like this that we're seeing flopping up and down, I can probably build some electronics that's going to give us uh, just a, a line straight across at a certain voltage which then uh, will always be okay uh, with regard to reading those voltages with these analog input pins. So I'm, I'm going to do something that's a little beyond, well, far beyond the scope of what you could maybe understand at this point if you've never studied any of this stuff. But essentially, instead of a line up at 5 and a line down at 0 flopping back and forth, by the way, the time scale of this flopping back and forth is um is one millisecond you see that one ms there that's one millisecond so it's five volts for a thousandth of a second and then it's zero volts for a thousandth of a second and then five volts for a thousandth of a second and zero volts for a thousandth of a second it's flipping back and forth so fast you can't see it flipping and for a lot of applications that will work but you can see it didn't work so well with these analog reads of those analog input pins so i'm gonna um I'm going to put some electronics components uh, on, on the, in the circuit uh, following the output pin 9. I'm going to go from output, output pin 9 to some special electronics, which is going to change this output signal to a constant. And then the analog input pin should work well.